Now uh, we are in the session 5 discussion of the non-resident taxation and the international taxation. Here the entire topic I am going to discuss uh, international taxation which is under uh, the double taxation treaties and uh, the how the avoidance of double taxation treaty has given in the provisions of the Inland Revenue Act. Uh, as, as much as possible, I will explain all these things and we will discuss the double taxation treaty. The time is limited, but uh, with that limited time, I will try to deliver everything to you to gather that 25 uh, marks uh, in your examination. Okay? We will come to this international uh, taxation which is uh, in that double taxation. Why there is a concept of the double taxation? Okay, it is uh, first we will go to the source principle and the, the global income principle. Then I will explain due to this what the interpretation is coming. Okay, in that the accessible income of a person for a year of assessment from employment, business, investment and other source shall, <coughs> shall be equal to A. In the case of the resident person, the person's income from employment, business, investment or other source for that year wherever the source arise. All of you all know this, we are talking about the source uh, the sorry the global income we are talking about the global income then b with reference to in the case of the non-resident person the person's income from the employment business investment or other source for that year to the extent that the income arises in no derived from the source in Sri Lanka. Okay? This is the first thing we have discussed even under the when we start in the non-resident uh, taxation which is accessible income of a resident person as well as the non-resident person. Now, Due to having this kind of the two concept, if think that the same concept is in the other country, the person non-resident in our country will be resident in their country. Thereby, the being a resident person of that country, his global income will be taxed in that country. Then for the source of payment in our country, he has made the payment and again he will tax in his country due to the, uh, the uh, his uh, this uh, global income taxation. Clear? To avoid that, what we can do come for this, this uh, if this provision exceeds the source principle and the global income, these two provisions exists. In income tax laws of other countries, in terms of profit and income of a same person tax in two countries, which results in one person has to pay tax in two countries. Okay, come to this. What, how this will happen? This happen like this. Lamai. Now, I think Mr. X. Mr. X is a non-resident, non-resident in our country and he is resident in, he is resident in uh, his country. We will uh, take India and the Sri Lanka, India and Sri Lanka, clear? Now, according to our act, any income arising in no derived in Sri Lanka for this non-resident person or a non-resident individual, he has to pay tax in Sri Lanka. Okay, paid tax, paid tax in Sri Lanka. Clear? Now, what happened if this the our Low, the global income for on behalf of a resident person, global income will get taxed 
on behalf of the non-resident person source of payment will get tax. Then if the same principle is there in India, what will happen? See, now thereby his uh, global income, global income shall liable to pay tax in India. This global income includes income earned in Sri Lanka, income earned in Sri Lanka, income earned in Sri Lanka. Then what is the issue Lamai when it comes to this for uh, income earned in Sri Lanka which is uh, his uh, the foreign source it uh, shall be taxed in India again. Then this global income include this income earned in Sri Lanka for this uh, the all the income including income earned in Sri Lanka and uh, all other income of this Mr. X. He has to pay tax in India, tax in India. He has to pay tax in India. Now see Ramai. Now for this income sources what he has earned in Sri Lanka, he has already paid tax. He has already paid tax in Sri Lanka. Due to this global income according to the residency principle, due to the taxation of the global income, he has to pay tax in India for his entire income which already he has paid tax in Sri Lanka, which already he has paid tax in Sri Lanka. Then what happened for same source? For an example thing he is earning in employment income, investment income in here. Then for these two which he has paid tax in Sri Lanka due to his residency in India due to this global income concept he has to pay the income uh, the income wherever arise that income he has to consider in his resident country. Clear? Then the tax paid in Sri Lanka and same source he has to pay tax in India which is the there is a cumbersome to this Mr. X as the double taxation. Double taxation double taxation clear ok then there is an issue of the double taxation to avoid this double taxation what could we can do it is given the guideline under international taxation I think the main issue is clear to you due to these two principles the same source tax in another country again to reduce to avoid this what are the treatment in the international level the steps has taken we are going to discuss ok. Come to that part we are in the this paragraph discussion if this provision exists that means source principle and the global income principle. Uh, in income tax laws of other countries in terms of the profit and income of a same person taxable in two countries. Okay, understood Sri Lanka and India in both countries Mr. X will have to pay tax which result in one person has to pay tax in two countries. The name is uh, the judicial which is international double taxation taxation of the same income source in two states for same person in same period. I think it is clear uh, before even before going f uh, for the powerpoint I have used this document because there is a flow then you should have to go with this uh, the very conceptual thing that is why uh, this much explanations are given ok. In that there are two principles when it comes to the 
identification of the income of a resident person and non-resident person, all of you all know there are two principles, one is the source principle, other one is the residence principle. This situation will lead to double taxation as I have explained. Okay? Now, there are two models for double uh, avoiding of double taxation and double taxation uh, the conventions there are two models one is the UN model other one is the OECD model then we will see that <coughs> as per the UN model of double taxation conventions double taxation is imposition of the comparable taxes in two or more states on the same taxpayer in respect of the same subject matter and the, the identical periods. It is under the UN model double taxation imposition of comparable rates in two or more states. The, on the same taxpayer in respect of the same subject matter. The tax rates are uh, the assigning under the, the comparable manner. Okay? Then, uh, it is under the UN model. Now, you all know how the double taxation is arising, what are the two principles. Uh, then we have to look at method of avoiding double taxation. Now, Lamai, this is not a correct thing. Mama mehed tax kevala, I need not to pay tax in this country also. It is a, uh, the cumbersome situation to the taxpayer. To avoid that, there is a methods of avoiding the double taxation. Okay, we the one of the the very uh, the progressive method is the double taxation avoidance agreement. Before that, we will come for this relief methods. There are two basic methods of elimination of double taxation. One is unilateral method. Other one is the bilateral relief. Okay, come to unilateral relief. Certain countries provide unilateral relief from double taxation by providing a credit in respect of the tax paid. Now, if I have applied that method to this explanation, now this uh, income earned in Sri Lanka, it is included in the global income of Mr. X, which is Indian citizen. The in the tax cal after computing the taxable income as a tax credit less the income tax paid in Sri Lanka income tax income tax paid in Sri Lanka can be deducted as the tax credit tax credit from the income tax liability which is uh, considered income tax liability computed considering his global income. To give this tax credit, this income source shall be included in his global income. May income make a global income make a Therefore, it should be included in the global income and if so, under the unilateral relief, you can claim the tax credit, which I have paid in Sri Lanka, I have taken uh, as the tax credit. I can take it as the tax credit. Is it clear? Okay, then we will come to the uh, next one. Paid to another country against the tax payable in the country which provides relief. Come done. Then next one, bilateral relief, the most common method from this bilateral relief lamai, the double taxation avoidance agreements, the coming into the picture under this bilateral relief. The most common method now utilized for avoiding or mitigating double taxation is to conclude tax treaties or agreements through negotiation between the respective countries then ratified by each country according to its domestic law. 
double taxation agreement between two contracting states like in Sri Lanka and India, Sri Lanka and China, Sri Lanka and Singapore. Likewise, even our country, we have a lot of double taxation avoidance agreement which providing benefit to the particular taxpayers in the both contracting states. Okay. Now, we need to look at that two principles, Lamai. We have uh, not discussed these two under the international taxation, source principle and residence principle come to this. The residence principle, the under the bilateral relief, these are coming. The, the tax should be levied by the country where the taxpayer is resident. The tax should be levied in the country where taxpayer is resident. It is understandable. Under source principle, under bilateral relief, the tax should be levied in the country within those territory the income arise. Clear what we are doing now? The world income is tax in that resident country. The source income, income or source of payment will be tax in the country where he is earning that income. Revenue share in principle, the tax should be shared between two countries. Okay. Then most of tax treaties are bilateral and that means this uh, the revenue sharing source principle and with the residence principle. The based on the model tax treaty on either the OECG model or a UN model. There are two these two models provide the double taxation relief accordingly. Then uh, treaty models, these are uh, included in your syllabus, then it's, uh, you should know all these provisions. Uh, treaty models, OECD model, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, that is the short form of the, the long term of the OECD. Uh, model first published in the draft model in 1963. The OECD model generally gives the primary right to the state of residence of the taxpayer. The OECD model tends to favor the developed countries by giving them the primary rights to the tax, the income accruing to their residence. The state of residence will reveal double taxation by way of foreign tax credit method or exemption of foreign income method. Now, Lamai, when it comes to our Act, Inland Revenue Act number 24 of 2017, this foreign tax credit from the Act itself, it has facilitated under Section 80. Okay? Then uh, UN model for uh, United Nations, this model is acceptable to developing countries and generally followed in negotiations between developed and developing countries. The UN model generally gives primary rise to the state where the income arises. That means from UN model, it, the, the dominance is given to the source country. Okay, source of payment in the source country. Then these are the models, treaty models and the source principle and method of avoiding double taxation and how it is, uh, first we have discussed the how the concept of double taxation came. Now we need to look at as the Inland Revenue Act, what are the provisions given by the Inland Revenue Act to facilitate the double taxation agreements and the mutual administrative agreements to, to as a solutions to this double taxation issue. First, we will look into the uh, provisions of the Inland Revenue Act. Next, <coughs> I need to discuss this. Uh, Singapore and uh, Sri Lanka double taxation treaty. Okay. Sections of Inland Revenue Act with reference to this uh, avoiding of double taxation. Double taxation agreements and mutual administrative assistance agreements, section 75. The act itself give the effects of the agreements. 
first one giving the effect to the agreement the minister may give effect to any double taxation agreement or mutual administrative assistance agreement with the foreign government or government that has been approved by the parliament and published in the Gazette. You can see Lamai, if I have uh, seen you a double taxation uh, the treaty in that this is uh, the Sri Lanka and Singapore treaty. We look at the first part of the treaty, it says the gazette of the domestic socialist public of Sri Lanka, extraordinary. This is after the negotiation, it is published by way of the gazette, okay, that has given in the act also. Then situation of conflict. Subject to the provisions of the subsection 3, where there is any conflict between the term of double taxation agreement having legal effect in Sri Lanka and the provisions of the act. Lamai, this is really important what has given. The double taxation agreement prevails in every time with reference to the provisions of the Inland Revenue Act and the provisions of the double taxation treaty what is the what should be the number one number one should be the double taxation agreement not the provisions of the inland revenue act if there is no double taxation agreement you should adhere to the provisions of the inland revenue act is it clear I am not telling this, it is in section 75 subsection 2, clear? This is consider this as a very, very important provision. Then third paragraph, situations where benefit is not available, subject to the provisions of subsection 4, where a double taxation agreement provides that any income from a Sri Lankan source is exempt or excluded from the uh, tax or the application of the agreement result in a reduction in the rate of Sri Lankan tax, then the benefit of that exemption, exclusion or reduction, please see this, shall not be available to a body that the purpose of the agreement is a resident of other contracting state when 50 percent or more of the underlying ownership of control of that body is held by an individual or individuals who are not resident of that other contracting state for the purpose of the agreement. See, the even there are the treatments for avoidance of the double taxation due to that benefits if there is a reduction in the rate or a, there is a reduction of the income tax liability which which money should be received to Sri Lanka as the tax some exemptions exclusions or reduction shall not available shall not available the situation is where the where the body of uh, the body or the particular person for the purpose of the agreement is a resident of other contracting state where held where the own the 50 percent or more of the underlying control of this the body uh, as the individual or uh, the individual or individuals who are the, the non-resident of that other contracting state okay it is to the, this provision has uh, given to uh, the protect our uh, the tax revenue. Okay. Then the fourth one, this has the this provision also given to the subject to the subsection four. The subsection four is the provision of subsection three shall not apply if the resident of other contracting state is a company listed in stock exchange in that other contracting state. Okay, if it is the listed entity in other contracting state, the above provision is not applicable. This the third provision, the situation where benefit is not available, totally provided to 
to uh, the reduce the shifting of profit uh, between two countries with the, the now the more than the 50 percent or more underlying ownership mean that uh, in our according to our law it is associated persons then to maybe to avoid the profit shifting the reduction of the income tax revenue to avoid all these things this kind of the, the safeguard provisions are applicable. Now, we will see for this section the definition for section which we have discussed section 75 for the purpose of section 75 these are the, the definitions double taxation agreement it means an international agreement relating to the avoidance of the double taxation and the prevention of fiscal evasion and mutual administrative assistance agreement means a tax information exchange agreement or other international agreement for mutual administrative assistance in relation to tax matter this is a kind the one uh, one way of the sharing of the information in between the two contracting states and double taxation agreement is to the purposely it has aligned to avoid the double taxation of that both uh, contracting states okay now uh, we will come to this as per the inland revenue act my next uh, the topic I am going to discuss which is under the Inland Revenue Act, what are the provisions given to take the relief from double taxation. This is not under double taxation treaty Lamai, this is from the Inland Revenue Act itself, what are the provisions given to as a relief to avoid the double taxation. That is one one relief it has given under section 80 foreign tax credit in the many of the see, uh, the situations in the discussion of this non-resident taxation i have discussed that part the foreign tax credit under section 80 the one of the benefit itself given by the inland revenue act okay we will discuss that part first relief from double taxation under inland revenue act which is claim of foreign tax credit which is under section 80 please note that these are core uh, the sections uh, you should know these things lamai before the exam you should know these areas very well okay in that a resident person may claim a foreign tax credit for a year of assessment for any foreign income tax paid by the person and to the extent to which the foreign income tax is paid with respect to the person's accessible foreign income for that year. Okay, I will explain this part. I will explain, come to this explanation. It is talking about the foreign tax credit for foreign income. Now, when looking at that and hearing uh, that section, you can understand um, it is talking about the foreign income, foreign tax paid on foreign income. Now, you have to think if it is for foreign income, this foreign tax credit applicable to whom? resident person in Sri Lanka, resident persons in Sri Lanka. Why I have told like that? To tax the foreign income of a person, he should be whom? He should be a resident person. Why? The global income of the or world income of the resident person will get tax in the resident country clear therefore for resident person in Sri Lanka if he has the local income as well as if he has the foreign income foreign income then for this foreign income if he has paid tax in the foreign country, 
tax in foreign country if the tax paid source has included in this foreign income up to that level the tax whatever the tax paid tax in uh, tax paid in foreign country if it is paid the tax as the US dollar 10 then up to that amount US dollars 10 it this US dollars 10 can be claimed against the foreign income which uh, included in the resident person's tax computation then it should be uh, supported by the particular there are supporting documents from this uh, foreign country to confirm that person has make the payment of US dollars 10 then uh, this uh, US dollar 10 can be claimed as a tax credit but uh, it is uh, up to the uh, see that definition it has given uh, foreign tax credit for a year of assessment for any foreign income tax paid by the person see the wording and to the extent to which the foreign income tax is paid may tax pay claim on income make other if it has included in this foreign income then we can uh, claim the or oh, we can take the tax credit okay uh, foreign income tax is paid with refer respect to the person's accessible foreign income for the year however in the following cases a claim of foreign tax credit which is not applicable what are those two situation a partnership to which section 53 subsection 1 applies in section 53 is uh, the talking about the uh, partnerships uh, the tax liability and everything in the, the definitions then a uh, trust to which the section 57 subsection 2 applies section 57 is talking about the taxation of trust in the the division 2 the chapter 5 the division 2 section 53 is talking about the partnership then under that the two situations the the partner the foreign tax credit is not applicable okay now go for the section 81 section 81 is giving the guidelines of the calculation of the foreign tax credit section 81 for calculation of foreign tax credit okay we will come to this part this is very very important in that foreign tax credit claimed under section 80 that is mean the claim foreign tax credit which I have claimed under section 80 a shall be calculated separately for each year of assessment that is the first thing foreign tax credit it should be calculated separately for each year of assessment it is understandable am I? we are computing the income tax liability for a particular year of assessment a foreign tax credit applicable to that year of assessment we have to take an into consideration and separately for accessible foreign income for each employment business investment or other source and further separately for each gain from the realization of investment asset what's this mean you should separately recognize local income and foreign income in that if i have uh, in depth analysis if i have done in that the local income local employment income business income investment income you have to recognize separately and foreign income employment income business income investment income or if there is other income both should recognize separately is this clear you have to recognize these two under these two headings the 
sources of income separately. Then only the way you can the deduct the foreign tax credit in a uh, very clear manner. Okay. Even the not only uh, I will analyze this, not only the investment income from invest, we have investment income from investment activities and the gains from realization of investment asset, realization of investment asset. Even in here, the from investment activities and realization of investment asset, realization of investment asset in both we have to recognize local separately foreign income separately done. Next what it has given foreign tax credit claimed under section 80 B with respect to each calculation shall not exceed the average rate of Sri Lankan income tax of the person for the year applicable to persons accessible foreign income shall not exceed average rate of Sri Lankan income tax. What is this average rate of Sri Lankan income tax? It has given the definition relevant definition section 81 subsection 4 for the purpose of this section average rate of Sri Lankan income tax of a resident person for a year of assessment means the percentage that the tax payable by the person under paragraph A of subsection 1 of section 2 calculated under subsection 3 of section 2 without any deduction of foreign tax credit is of the taxable income of person for the year. What is this? Uh, the means the percentage uh, that tax payable by the person under paragraph A of subsection 1 of section 2. What is the my section 2 subsection 1 paragraph A? What is section 2? It is a charge in section. In the charge in section, what is your the subsection 1? The subsection 1 of the charge in section is talking about the, the 2, uh, the taxable income of the uh, how are you going to pay the tax. Then uh, without crediting without deducting the foreign tax credit what is the taxable income of that person it should be uh, the below it is uh, not below the uh, it is uh, here yeah it is uh, not uh, shall not exceed the average rate of sri lankan income tax okay then uh, we have looked into what is the average rate of sri lankan income tax what is uh, that is a resident person for year of assessment it is means the percentage that the tax payable by the person under this uh, the charge in section without any deduction for the foreign tax credit is a taxable income of the person for the year okay then we will come to next one the conditions to be uh, con conditions for allowing foreign tax credit section 81 subsection 2. Come to this. A foreign tax credit shall be allowed under this section. See the condition only if the foreign tax credit is paid within 2 years after the end of the year in which the foreign income to which the tax relate was the derived by the resident person or within such uh, the further time as commissioner general may allow to claim the foreign tax credit on behalf of the foreign income the first thing is tax should be paid second one the tax should be paid within within two years after 
end of the year in which the foreign income to which the tax relate was derived. If I have received the foreign income for that foreign income at least within two years I have to pay the tax the relevant to that foreign income if it is so I can claim the foreign tax credit ok the restriction has given. Then restriction on refund carry back or carry forward of foreign tax credit uh, even uh, the refunds there are the foreign the other uh, in local sources if there are overpayments of income tax likewise if there are refunds available but for the foreign tax credit there may not be the some refunds are available ok. Uh, any foreign tax credit or part of the foreign tax credit allowed under this section for a year that is not credited under paragraph B of subsection 3 of the section 2 shall not be refunded. If we have not claimed the foreign tax credit under the taxable income after the under the taxable income after application of rate if there is a ta from tax liability if we have not credited not deducted it as a tax credit it shall not be refunded it shall not be carried back to the proceeding year or carried forward to the following year and in the case of realization of an investment asset shall not be credited in relation to the realization of another investment asset. You can see all the, the foreign tax credit if you have paid in that year of assessment if that foreign income has included in your world income you should have to take the tax credit and finish off. First you have to pay that tax credit and you have to claim it finish off no refund, no carry back, no carry forward foreign tax credit even with res reference to the taxable which is tax liability which uh, you have not claimed against tax liability as well as the realization gains from the investment asset. Clear? Now you know how to claim the foreign tax credit, the calculation part and uh, what are the conditions, uh, in which condition you can claim, deduct the foreign tax credit and the restriction of foreign tax credit which not uh, claimed to uh, the restriction on refund carry back or carry it forward it is not allowing ok. Then uh, in the definition we have looked into what is this average rate of Sri Lankan income tax what is this accessible foreign income means foreign source of income included in accessible income of the resident person for a year of assessment from employment business investment or other source. Uh, as the case required I have explained this but I have not included other income if it is there if it is uh, there it should be included in the in as the foreign income again I have to highlight you can see Lamai accessible income of a what person resident person do not forget these core principles it is talking about the resident person that is mean to claim the foreign tax credit it should be resident person because under the world income concept the, resi the foreign income should be included in a resident person's entire income ok. Then uh, I think the provisions of the Inland Revenue Act uh, has everything done Lamai, nothing I have lapsed everything I have done with reference to this international taxation now even it is difficult now I am going for the analyzation of the double taxation agreement.
in that I am going to discuss the double taxation agreement between Sri Lanka and Singapore. Okay. Let me give one minute. Uh, actually, we do not know what, what will uh, tested in your examination. Any treaty in Sri Lanka and other country can be tested in your paper. Then only thing Lama you should familiar with one or two double taxation treaties before the examination. That is really very important because when it taken the double taxation treaty the, for your examination purpose the examiner is given particular annexures or article as the annexure these articles which uh, they are testing is given in your paper, then it is really easy for you all only then the uh, at a once if you all seen it in the examination, you may in a difficulties reading and understanding of that, but it is better before the exam if you can familiarize with uh, one or two double taxation treaty, it very helpful to you all. Now, I am going to do that reading double taxation treaty with you all, discussion on the double taxation treaty which as a help for your examination. Okay? Clear? Then before coming to the double taxation treaty, I need to explain the flow of your answer. The flow of your answer, we will do that and I need to link the double taxation treaty provisions. Uh, up to the areas which you have learned, uh, learned uh, up to this double taxation provisions. Okay. Now, in the we are in the topic of this is summarization. Lamai, we are in the topic of non-resident taxation and international taxation, which is your fifteen percent of syllabus area. In that, how you are going to write an answer? Now think that there is a double taxation agreement between your the country in your question which is testing in your examination DTA. Now you must apply the provisions of the double taxation avoidance agreement. Why I am telling like that? Because under section 75 subsection 2 which is we have talked about the double taxation agreement and the mutual the administrative agreements in that very clearly given under section 75 subsection 2 the we should give the priority to the the priority should be given the it is uh, it is given there is a conflict between uh, these uh, two we should go by the or a first uh, priority we should give the double taxation avoidance D sorry D T A double taxation avoidance agreement we should give the priority. This is one thing you should know and when it asks now we have looked into the source of payment. Now in the examination if the examiner asks about the royalty, royalty income which earned by the non-resident person from Sri Lanka. How are you going to write an answer? First thing, now in the question it has given non-resident person. If we even if has not given, you have to start from the section 69 and check whether resident or non-resident. Check whether resident or non-resident. If it is the non-resident, then Lamai, you have to look at under section 73, is he having any source of payment in Sri Lanka, section 73. If this section 73 is yes, there he is earning, which is royalty is the source of payment under section 73 subsection 1c. Then if it is yes, now you have to apply section 4 provision. Section 4, what is section 4? Accessible income. In the accessible income, you have to apply yes, this is an unresident person, therefore source of payment. 
income arising in no derived from the this royalty it should be taxed in sri lanka clear now these things are done then you have to look at if it is in sri lanka what is the income tax rate the withholding tax rates withholding tax rates it is 14 percent if it is not derived through the Sri Lankan permanent establishment, this is final withholding, final withholding payment. And then it is the particular section for royalty section 84 subsection 1 para A Roman 1 with the, uh, the first schedule, first schedule para 10, first schedule paragraph 10, clear, all of you all know up to now, am I correct, we have done the question up to this, without any hesitation I can tell up to this you all ok, now the question is how are you going to link this double taxation treaty to this area double taxation treaty to this area the link is this you have to conclude your answer I am coming to here you should conclude your answer conclude your answer based on the provisions of based on the provisions of double taxation avoidance agreement if the double taxation for example if the double taxation avoidance agreement which uh, if i have taken in the the royalty it is uh, for an example in the royalty if the double taxation avoidance agreement if it has given a separate rate maybe for an example maybe 10 percent given can you apply the 14 percent on this you have to write according to the inland revenue act yes there are provision like this but under section 75 subsection 2 we have to take as the first priority the double taxation treaty thereby the rate is 10 percent in the treaty particular article if it has given the rate as 10 percent you should apply the 10 percent and your recommendation conclusion should be end with this 10 percent clear this is the if it is source of payment lamai there are common question asking in your paper to recognition of the sources of payment under section 73 then it, it is maybe for the 5 marks 6 marks then please write a this kind of the answer this is the flow if you have applied this manner no one can reduce your marks clear please uh, the, the look at what is the source it, it is a non-resident identify that then apply these uh, things then you are all okay with your answer okay to take that position this part this uh, dta part i have not done then i am starting that part with the uh, with intention of to your answer to provide a conclusion which is uh, the under section 75 subsection 2 since we should apply the provisions of the double taxation treaty if there is a treaty between these two contracting states am i clear to you okay then with this overall understanding we will start the discussion of the double taxation treaty i have selected the treaty between sri lanka and singapore whatever treaty the sri lanka and india sri lanka and china you can refer but i have selected this one we will discuss this uh, the uh, double taxation treaty but my not all the provisions not all the articles but relevant important articles I will discuss with you all. Okay.
Okay, we will start the discussion. See the gazette notification. It has even issued under the, uh, the old act, but it is uh, valid. Then this is the agreement between the government of the Democratic Socialist uh, Republic of Sri Lanka and the government of the Republic of Singapore. What is the purpose, Lamai? For the avoidance of double taxation and the prevention of fiscal evasion with respect to taxes on income. Okay, the, the meaning is understandable. It is to avoidance of the double taxation. Done. Okay, then persons covered are in the double taxation uh, agreements. Let me explain a little bit. There are articles in the Inland Revenue Act. Lamai, there are sections. In the double taxation uh, treaties, there are articles. Then the article 1 uh, for persons covered and article 5 for permanent establishment, article 7 for business income. Likewise, then we, you write in your answer, you have to refer that article and you have to write the answer. Okay, clear? Now, article 1. Uh, persons covered, uh, normally persons covered, the residence and the agreement shall apply to persons who are resident of one or both contracting state. That means, the Singapore and Sri Lanka, the in the both they are residents, then what is the treatment is going to be. Then, uh, taxes covered, article 2, we are talking about taxes covered. Uh, in that this agreement shall apply to taxes on income imposed uh, on behalf of a contracting state or of its political subdivisions or local authority irrespective of the manner in which they are levied. It is on it in the contracting state it or uh, its political subdivision or everything is a taxes on income. Okay, then two, there shall be regarded as as taxes on income, all taxes imposed on total income or on elements of income, including taxes on gains from the alienation of movable or immovable property. All the income, total income or elements, income make a unad it shall applicable. The existing taxes to which the agreement shall apply in Singapore income tax, Sri, the hereafter it is a Singapore tax, in Sri Lanka income tax, including the income tax based on the turnover of enterprise entered into agreement with the BOI. That also that up to that extent it has covered, it is after that it is the Sri Lankan tax. Okay. Now, uh, Article 3 general definition, I am not going to discuss the general definition that it is talking about the contracting state and the other contracting state, it will change, uh, it will change based on the, uh, the, the context uh, request and person include the individual, a company or any other body of person. Uh, now, company means uh, any body corporate or any entity that is treated as a body corporate for tax purposes. Now, these uh, other than that, I am not going to discuss this. All uh, the definitions. Article 4, precedent, it is uh, all of you all know the for the purpose of this agreement, the term resident of the contracting state means any person who under the laws of that state, see Lamai, under the laws of that state, that is mean in our law, that state, what is the law? Under section 69, resident, <coughs> resident individual or resident company, the under that law, that is mean a domestic law, how it uh, the identify the resident person and the non-resident person, same thing is applicable here. 
okay that's why under the laws of that state is liable to tax therein by reason of his domic domicile residence place of incorporation place of management or any other criterion of a similar nature and also includes that state and any political subdivision and all okay it is the resident uh, part then uh, I need to come to this one if you are referring to this uh, the double taxation treaty with me please highlight please mark uh, this as these are very very important articles not that other one to four articles are not important yes all of these are important but your examination perspective article 5 which is talking about the permanent establishment is really important okay now when it comes to the permanent establishment when it comes to the permanent establishment now from the inland revenue act you all know about SLPE, Sri Lankan Permanent Establishment, which defined in section 195 and foreign permanent establishment. Again, it has defined in the interpretation section. Now, this is talking about PE as per D. P A as per the double taxation, what is the meaning of the permanent establishment? Now, Lamai, even there are two definitions in the Inland Revenue Act. If there is a definition in the DTA, what definition you are going to apply? The DTA definition. Therefore, is this important or not? This is really critical. Why? To you to identify what income am I? Business income attributable to permanent establishment. Before thinking about the business income, you have to think whether it is a PE or not. Clear? Then to identify that clearly, uh, don't you know the definition? Yes, you should know the definitions. Okay, then uh, we will come to article 5 permanent establishment. For the purpose of this agreement, the term PE means uh, fixed place of business. See, fixed place of business through which the business of an enterprise is wholly or partly carried on maybe partly maybe in full carried on in a fixed place of business don't forget <coughs> in every time when it comes to pe you are talking about a business okay then the term permanent establishment includes mevat atulat venava specifically a place of management a branch an office, a factory, a workshop, and a mine, an oil or gas well, a quarry, uh, any other place of extraction of natural resources. Clear? Then the term permanent establishment also encompasses. Please highlight or put a strict mark on this one and come to these two paras. A and B. A building site, a construction, assembly or installation project, a drilling rig or ship used for the exploration or development of natural resources, including supervisory activities in connection therewith, but only if such site, project or activities last for a period how many days am I? period of more than 183 days any within 12 months period if i have taken the permanent the sri lankan permanent establishment definition which is given in the section 195 is this covered the uh, construction assembly or installation project it is in that definition but lamai how many days in our act it is for 90 days or more in the singapore and 
<coughs> Sri Lanka Treaty, it has given more than 183 days. Clear? Now, B, the furnishing of services uh, that also in here uh, in our uh, Inland Revenue Act also. Then, the furnishing of services including consultancy services by an enterprise of a contracting estate through employees or other personnel engaged by the enterprise for such purpose, but only if activities of that nature continue for the same or a connected project within the other contracting estate. How many days? <coughs> for a period or periods aggregating more than 183 days within 12 months period. The same provision is in our permanent establishment definition in the, the para C of that definition. Now, uh, are you clear? I have discussed first para, second para and the third para. Now, in your lot of questions, this uh, in with reference to any treaty. In the permanent establishment, this para A and para B given in the question. There is a construction site, uh, this much of employees came in this date and they have left from the project this date and one supervisory person is uh, <coughs> in the project. Likewise, the background information given, you should know whether this is <coughs> PE or not. Okay. Now, uh, notwithstand fourth paragraph, notwithstanding the preceding provisions of this article, the term uh, permanent establishment shall be deemed not to include. Please highlight these things. Deemed not to include. These are not this A to F, not the PEs. Okay. The use of the facilities only for the purpose of storage, display or delivery of goods or merchandise belongs to the enterprise. The maintenance of stock of goods or merchandise belongs to the enterprise solely for the purpose of storage, display or delivery. The maintenance of stock of goods, merchandise belongs to the enterprise solely for the purpose of proceeding of another enterprise. The and uh, the maintenance of the fixed place of business solely for the purpose of purchasing goods or merchandise or of uh, collecting information for the enterprise and uh, all these six are not <coughs> deemed not to include as the permanent establishment. Now, Lamai, I need to come for uh, this uh, paragraph uh, which is uh, we will come to this notwithstand the five, notwithstand in the provisions of paragraph 1 and 2, see paragraph 1 and 2, notwithstand in the provision of paragraph 1 and 2, now I come to this very, very important this paragraph 5, where a person other than an independent status to whom paragraph 7 applies is actually in a contracting state on behalf of an enterprise of the other contracting state and has and habitually exercised in that contracting state uh, an authority to conclude contracts in the name of the enterprise, then that enterprise shall be deemed to have permanent establishment in that state. See, what is this talking about? Other than the independent agent, if there is a dependent agent on behalf of this enterprise, due to that dependent agent, this if this enterprise is what then in deemed to have a permanent establishment. In the permanent establishment, SLPE definition, this definition under section 195, independent agent has excluded even under article 5 of the Sri Lanka Singapore treaty the depend the independent agent has excluded but the any income derived to the non-resident person from the 
the dependent agent it is considering as what p e of that non resident person if it is so you have to compute the business income of that uh, non resident person due to that dependent agent clear i am not just reading the treaty lemma i am taking the treaty and comparing it with the inland revenue act provisions and what you have learned i am going to link to this therefore uh, before this one please uh, the download the treaty and uh, please refer this one this is for your own benefit okay uh, unless the activities of such person are limited to those mentioned paragraph 4 in the paragraph 4 uh, it is uh, given it is not include as the permanent establishment in that if the if they are not included under that six situation then it is if exercise to a fixed place of business would not make this fixed place of business a permanent establishment under the provision of that paragraph if anything doing under paragraph 4 which is exclusion paragraph it has to be excluded other than that the dependent agent is a pe as per sri lankan and singapore treaty okay then uh, Now come to paragraph 7, it is very clearly talking about the position of the independent agent, the position of the independent agent come to this. An enterprise of the contracting state C shall not be deemed to have permanent establishment, shall not be deemed to have PE in the other contracting state merely because it carries on business in that other state through a broker, general commission agent or any other agent underline or highlight this of and what is status lamai independent status now you can understand how important that two case law provision anglo persian oil company versus cir chivias and sons limited versus cir and see it is linked to the um, inland revenue act and it is linked to the double taxation treaty please go through these things and have a link and this is very important to you to write and compute your non-resident taxation questions okay agent of an independent status provide that such person are acting in c ordinary cause of their business but however <coughs> when the activities of such an agent are devoted wholly or almost wholly on behalf of the enterprise and conditions are made of impose between that enterprise and the agent in their commercial and financial relations which differ from those which are would have been made between independent enterprise he will not be considered an agent of the independent status even if the the if it is not satisfied the status of the independent agent if if that uh, agent is doing having a commercial and financial in a substance manner in the commercial and financial agreements with uh, the enterprise the non resident person then it is not considered in as the independent agent okay then uh, these are the things i need to discuss with you all under article 5 permanent establishment all the important things i have discussed uh, with taking into consideration the treaty okay then uh, next one article 6 again very important talking about income from immovable property income from immovable property and with this article am i i need to go for article i am not mistaken article 12 not mistake sorry it's not article 12 uh, sorry article 13 capital gains capital gains okay let me explain this uh, i will take the same use the same space here the income from immovable property income from 
immovable property when it comes to immovable property there are two income one is the rent income one is the rent income and other one is if you have disposed the property if there is a gains from realization of investment asset from investment asset then the rent income in the Singapore uh, the Sri Lanka treaty rent income is talking in the about the article 6 gains from realization of in the asset is talking about in the article 13. I am going to do these two together. I am going to do these two together. First, I am going to article 6 and discuss that article first and after that I will come to the article 13. Okay, here we go for discussion of the article 6. Income from immovable property. Income derived by a resident of the contracting estate from immovable property situated in other contracting estate may be taxed in that other contracting estate. That means there is a property situated, there is a person in Singapore, the property situated in Sri Lanka, any income in Sri Lanka on behalf of this property is taxed in Sri Lanka. That is why in the first part it has given. <coughs> then definition, the term immovable property shall have the meaning which it has under the law of the contract in estate. Immovable property should be accordingly the law of the contract in estate. Okay. Then in which the property in question is situated. If the property is in Sri Lanka, the definition of the immovable property should be according to the domestic law of the Sri Lanka. The term shall in any case include property accessory to uh, immovable property, livestock and equipment used in agriculture and forestry, rights to which the provisions of general law respect the respecting the landed property apply, the usufruct of the immovable property and rights of variable or fixed payment as consideration for the working of or the right of work, mineral deposit, sources and other natural resources, ship, boats and aircraft shall not be regarded as the immovable property the definition has given. Now third one, the provision of paragraph 1 shall apply to income derived from the direct use C, the income coming from direct use, letting or using any other form of immovable property, everything included. Fourth one, the provision of paragraph 1 and 3 shall also apply to the income from immovable property of an enterprise and to income from immovable property uh, for the performance of the independent personal services. Now, my who is independent personal services? It is like a consultant. In this article, there are two services. One is dependent personal service, other one is the independent personal service. Dependent mean uh, I am providing my service but there is a one person in uh, the upper level which is employment income is a dependent personal service the the freelance consultation likewise uh, the consultancy if i am a consultant i am an independent person i think the article 6 income from immovable property is clear now lamai article 6 the particular tax rate has not given Clear particular tax rate is not given. It is telling income derived by a resident of the contracting estate from immovable property situated in other contracting estate may be taxed in that other contracting estate. Property is situated in Sri Lanka, property belongs to non the Singapore the citizen, the non-resident person then therefore what is the applicable tax rate since the tax rate is not given 
and in the treaty it has given it should be a tax in Sri Lanka for the rent. The property belongs to a non-resident person. If it has given for the rent, what is the withholding tax rate applicable? 14 percent. 14 percent then you should write your answer accordingly. Okay. Then next one, uh, I need to go for the article 13. Article 13, capital gains. Come to this, gains derived by a resident of the contracting state. See uh, why I have taken this together. This is for alienation of immovable property referred to in Article 6 and situated in other contracting state may be taxed in other contracting state. The same thing property is in Sri Lanka. If you have sold the property, the gain should be taxed in Sri Lanka. Second para, gain from the alienation of immovable property forming part of the business property of the permanent establishment which an enterprise of a contracting state has in the other contracting state of uh, state or movable property pertaining to a fixed base available to a resident of the contracting state in other contracting state for the purpose of performing independent personal service including such gain from the alienation of such PE or if such fixed base may be taxed in that other state. Now, if it is the attached to the permanent establishment, then it should be even in that manner, it should be taxed in the other contracting state. Okay. Then, uh, th the third para is talking about the lineation of ships or aircraft operate, uh, operated in international traffic or movable property pertaining to the operation of such ships or aircraft shall be taxed only in that state. That is mean if it is in the uh, Singapore, it should be taxed only in the Singapore. Okay. Then uh, come to this, gains derived by a resident of the contract in state from the alienation of shares of a company. Very valid, very important. Highlight this one, put that strict mark. It is a alienation of shares of a company other than shares traded in on a recognized stock exchange. If it is listed shares, this provision is not applicable. If this is not the listed shares deriving more than 50 percent of their value from the movable property situated in the other contracting state may be taxed in that other contracting state. This uh, under the capital gains lamai with reference to double taxation treaty this para 4 this areas is not tested. Therefore, please go through these areas. These are very important. Okay. Then uh, again, fifth one, gain from the alienation of any property other than referred in the preceding paragraph of this article shall be taxable only in the contract in a state of which the alienator is resident. That is mean if the alienator in Singapore, the other than this uh, movable properties and immovable properties mentioned in above, all other should be taxed in the residence country. Okay. The, it is the end of the discussion of the article 13 and article 6. Now, I am going for the one of the next important, very important article which is the article 7 which is talking about your most uh, important which is business profit, <coughs> business profit. Okay. We will come to this. The profit of an enterprise of the contracting state shall be taxed only in that state unless the enterprise carrying on business or another contracting state to a PE situated therein. If the enterprise carries on a business as aforesaid, the profit of the enterprise 
may be taxing the other contracting state, but only so much of them as is attributed to the permanent establishment. See, in the first para is giving us the guidance the if there is a uh, business profit attributable to the permanent establishment that uh, on behalf of that the tax should pay in that other contract in that means if a Singapore uh, the there is a construction site in Sri Lanka it's a uh, the super provision of service it is more than 183 days in Sri Lanka. If it is so, the it is the PE on that PE the amount income arising in order that is why it has given attributable to PE. It should be pay tax in Sri Lanka also. Is it clear? That is the first paragraph. Okay. Now, I am going to the second paragraph. Subject to the provisions of paragraph 3, we will go to the paragraph 3 later, where an enterprise of the contracting state carries on business in the other contracting state to a PE situation situated therein, there shall in each contracting state be attributed to the PE the profit which it might be expected to make if it were distinct and separate enterprise engaged in the same or similar activity under the same or similar condition and dealing wholly independently with the enterprise of which the permanent establishment. This uh, the very simply the PE we should need to consider as a separate entity and compute the income tax liabilities. Now, we will come to that so called paragraph 3. In determining the profit of a permanent establishment, there shall be allowed as the deductions all expenses including executive and general administrative expenses which would be deductible if the permanent establishment were as were an independent enterprise. In so far as they are reasonably uh, allocable to the uh, permanent establishment, we are incurred in contracting a state in which the permanent establishment is situated or elsewhere. What is this telling? Determining a profit of PE allowed as a deduction all expenses including executive and general administrative expenses. Now, Lamai, this is not talking about the head office expenses. Huh? This is talking about on behalf of the PE as the independent enterprise to conduct the business activities of PE. If you have the PE has incurred the expenses as the the executive and general administrative expenses that is can be deducted when arriving into the profit. But again, Lama, you need to apply the, the provisions of the Inland Revenue Act on allowable and disallowable expenses. Okay. Then uh, para 4, no profit shall be attributable to the PE by reason of the mere purchase by that permanent establishments or good or merchandise for the enterprise. No profit shall be attributed to the permanent establishment by reason of the mere by see this purchase by that permanent establishment or good or merchandise for the enterprise. That is mean the the buying and selling, any profit on this buying and selling transactions, it cannot be attributed. Then, uh, okay, then uh, uh, next thing, uh, okay, then this uh, just read this paragraph uh, 5, 6, and uh, 7. Then uh, it is, uh, please read it. it, it can be understandable. The important things under the business profit article 7 I have discussed with you. Now, 
I am coming to article 8, shipping and air transport. Now, Lamai, when it comes to business income, let me ask this question from you. When it comes to business profit, the recognition of business profit based on what, Lamai? Based on the permanent establishment. If you have not recognized under article 5, very clearly whether this arrangement is the PE or not, you cannot compute the business profit. Every time business profit is linked to the permanent establishment, do not forget these key things. Then article 7, shipping and air transport, uh, can you remember in the, the shipping and air transport we had the telecommunication CE and air transportation with all in tax rate of 10 percent. We will see what it has given in the, uh, the double taxation treaty. This is a source of payment even under the section 73 article 8. Profit derived in the contracting state by an enterprise of the other contracting state from the operation of ships in international traffic may be taxed in the first mentioned state. That is mean in this if it is Singapore and Sri Lanka, if it is the if uh, it is done in the Singapore, it will be taxed in the first mentioned state. But the tax or charge shall be reduced by an amount equal to 50 percent thereof. Two, Profit derived in the contracting state by an enterprise of the other contracting state from the operation of aircraft in international traffic shall be taxable only in that other state. That is mean uh, if the, the Singapore and Sri Lanka then other contracting state is the Sri Lanka then it should be taxed in the Sri Lanka. The profit derived in the contracting state by an enterprise of the other contracting state. Uh, sorry, in here, profit derived in a contracting state by an enterprise of other contracting. That is mean uh, the Singapore person is earning income in Sri Lanka from the operations of the aircraft in international traffic shall be taxed in that other. Yes, it is correct. It's uh, tax in Sri Lanka. Third one, the provision of paragraph 1 and 2 shall also apply to profit from the participation in a pool, a joint business or an international operating agency. Then after that, uh, the inclusion of the this paragraph given for the purpose of this article, profit from the operation of ships or aircraft in international traffic shall include the profit from the rental on a, the bear board basis of ships or aircraft and profit from the use, maintenance or rental of containers uh, used for the transport of goods or merchandise. Okay? Then this is on the ship and air uh, transport, please go through this one, then uh, there is a reduction of the income tax liability, okay? uh, tax charge. Uh, associated enterprise, I am not going to discuss, Lamai, please go through this and I am coming to directly article 10 dividends, one of the important article. Dividend paid by the company which is a resident of the contracting estate to a resident of other contracting estate may be taxed in that other estate. If a, uh, the, we are paying a dividend in Sri Lanka, paying a dividend to a Singapore company, then that dividend income earned by the Singapore company in Sri Lanka should be taxed in Sri Lanka. That is the first paragraph. That is the uh, first paragraph. Then, see the application of the dividend rate. However, such dividend may also be taxed in the contracting state of which the company paying the dividend is a resident and according to the law of that state. But if the beneficial owner of the dividends is a resident of the other contracting state, the tax or charge underline or highlight shall not exceed what? 
what is the lamine what is the percentage of dividend the percentage of dividend tax according to the sri lankan law it is the 14% don't forget ta huh? it is 14% now when it comes to the double taxation treaty it is shall not exceed 7.5% of the gross remuneration of the dividends if the beneficial owner is a company which holds directly at least 25% of the equity of the company pay in the dividend if the sri lankan company has paid the dividend to the singapore company then that singapore company holds shares in sri lankan company directly at least 25% of the capital then that dividend income shall be taxed at the rate of 7.5% in other case 10% of the gross amount of dividend in all other cases now lamai i am again coming to this chart i am again coming to this chart in this chart this is not royalty i am talking about the dividend dividend it is as per the uh, act is a 14% but in the double taxation treaty in between sri lanka and singapore it is 2.75% if the invested in shares is directly at least 25% if not it's 10% then our rate is 14 treaty has provide this two rates if this condition satisfied what's the rate in your final answer you are going to apply in your examination it is 7.5 not this 14% ehema kiyala are you are going to not mention about this 14% you have to write this entire story and you have to write as per the article 10 within brackets sorry within inverted commas dividends the it has provided if the such dividend may also be taxed in the contracting state if the 7.5% of the gross amount of the dividend if the beneficial owner is a company which hold directly at least 25% of the the controlling capital of the company which is paying the dividend then it is 7.5% why you are telling it 7.5% you have to prove it from this as per section 75 sub section 2 where there are conflicts now let me see the conflict Treaty is telling it's seven point five or ten. The act is telling it's fourteen percent. There is a conflict of the rates. If there is a conflict in between act and the double taxation treaty, what should prevail? Treaty should prevail. I think this is clear. I think this is clear. Then. up to this level you should write your answer okay then uh, come to this one it's 10% uh, it has given and the meaning of the dividend is given even under our act dividend has defined the separate definition has given in this please go through now come to the paragraph 4 the exclusion paragraph the paragraph the provisions of paragraph 1 and 2 underline no highlight shall not apply if the beneficial owner of the dividend being a resident of the contracting state c carries on business that's mean if this income is attached to the permanent establishment this provision it is should computed under the business income the assessable income from business assessable income from investment business in other contracting state of which the company pay in the dividend is the resident through a permanent establishment situated therein or performs in that other 
state uh, state independent personal services from a fixed base situated therein and the holding in respect of which the dividends are paid is effectively connected with the permanent establishment of fixed base in such case provision of article 7 what is this business profit of article 14 as the case may be shall apply Okay, then if it is connected to the PE, you should compute under the business income basis. Okay, then please read the paragraph uh, 5. I am not going to uh, discuss the uh, paragraph 5 with you all. Then uh, article 11 interest, it is the same way. Well, come to this. Uh, interest article 11 the dividend royalty interest aircraft and shipping permanent establishment business profit these are it is normally testing in any treaty these are uh, which have the power to test okay article uh, I, mean, I don't know but uh, i'm just telling uh, this uh, since these are very important provision, if these are not tested, do not blame on me. Okay? Article 11, interest, interest arising in a contracting state and paid to a resident of the other contracting state may be taxed in that other state. That means, <coughs> the Sri Lankan uh, companies pay in the interest to the Singapore company. It is a source of payment, it should be taxed in Sri Lanka. Come to this, however, such interest may also be taxed in the contracting state in which it arises and according to the laws of that state. But if the beneficial owner of the interest is a resident of the other contracting state, the tax so charged shall not exceed 10 percent of the gross amount of interest. Now, Lamai, in our case, for the interest, it is 5 percent, withholding tax rate is 5 percent. In this, it is telling shall not exceed 10 percent, then obviously we can go for the 5 percent because it is not telling, uh, yeah, it shall not exceed 10 percent. That means below 10 percent any amount we can go, then we can apply the, the our law provision we can apply, okay. The tax or charge shall not exceed 10 percent of the gross amount of the interest. Okay. Then notwithstanding, notwithstanding the provisions of paragraph 2, interest arising in a contracting state and paid to the government of the contracting state shall be exempt from income tax of the first mentioned contracting state. Uh, for this, this one, uh, for your answer, please write in the same manner. Uh, tax or charge shall not be exceed uh, 10 percent of the gross amount of interest. Then conclude from this answer, conclude from this one, come up to this, apply uh, instead of 14 is a 5 percent is interest, the withholding tax applicable and conclude your answer as per article uh, 11, the interest in the double taxation treaty, it shall not be exceed the 10 percent. Okay? Then uh, the interest paid to the government and interest derived to beneficial loan by banking and finance institution, these are exemptions. Then uh, please go through these areas also and interest definition has given. And again the paragraph 5 as which we have discussed earlier in the other uh, provisions, it is if it is uh, applica attributable to the permanent establishment it should be computed under that permanent establishment. Okay? Please go through this paragraph 5, 6 and 7 and uh, I am taking the royalties, article 12, royalty again there is a conflict between act and the treaty, come to this, article 12, royalties, royalties arising in a contracting state and paid to a resident of the other contracting estate may be taxed in that other contracting is the same thing royalty paid to Singapore company should be taxed in Sri Lanka. What is the rate Lamai in our law for the royalty is 14 percent what is given in the treaty. However, such royalty 
may also be taxing the contracting state in which they arise and according to the laws of the state. But if the beneficial owner of the royal is a resident of other contracting state, the tax or charge shall not exceed 10 percent of the gross amount of royal. Now, we are having a 14 percent, we cannot apply 14 percent, we should apply under the treaty for royalty was the rate is the 10 percent. It is the 10 percent of income tax. Okay? The definition of the royalty given, again the, the paragraph 4, it is same thing given, if it is attributable to the permanent establishment, we, you should compute it under the business income. <coughs> okay. Article 13 I have discussed, now come to this two personal, independent personal services and the dependent personal services, very very important. Okay. <coughs> independent personal service mean Lamai, he is free. Think that freelance consultant, dependent mean the person who up to me dictating rules and conditions to me to do this uh, pay salary, this is the expense you should incur then dependent personal is the employment income, independent personal is the, the freelance consultant likewise. Okay? How are we going to tax the, the income of the independent personal as well as income of the dependent personal? I am going to discuss article 14 and the article 15, come to this one. Independent personal services, income derived by an individual, see this is for individual. The, if in the non-resident taxation, if the individual taxation is testing, these two articles are very, very important to you. Okay? Who is a resident of the contracting state in respect of the professional services or other activities underline or highlight independent character? This is a professional service or other activity. Independent character shall be taxable only in that state, except of the following circumstances when such income may also be taxed in other contracting state. May Pahalatiana conditions if these are if these are satisfied, if these are satisfied, then uh, the this person shall pay tax in the Singapore. If these are not satisfied, shall pay tax in Sri Lanka also, except the following circumstances when such income may also tax in the other contracting state. Okay, come to first one. If he has a fixed base regularly available to him in the other contracting state for the purpose of performing his activities, in that case only so much of the income as it attributable to that fixed base may be taxed in the other contracting state. If he is not uh, providing his, he, if he has not aware, if, if he not available in a fixed base, then he only has to pay tax in Singapore. If he has a fixed base in Sri Lanka and he is performing his activities based on that fixed base, then he should pay tax in Sri Lanka. Or now see, or may the A be in the two condition, if one satisfied, then based on the scenario, he may pay tax in Singapore or Sri Lanka, you have to evaluate this, not the both. The B, if his stay, the other contract in his, that is mean in Singapore per, non-resident person, stay in Sri Lanka for a period or periods exceeding in the aggregate of 183 days, any 12 months period, in that case, only so much of the income as he derived from his activities performed in that other state may be taxing. That means, if he has stayed in Sri Lanka more than 183 days, sorry, 183 days or more in any 12 months period, in that period what he has earned, it should be taxed in Sri Lanka. Okay? This is on the dependent 
personal services which comes to your individual taxation. This is talking about individual. Lamai, please go through individual taxation, the relief applicable, the slabs, the tax rates, please go through these areas before your examination. Then term of uh, professional service, it has defined as the include especially independent scientific uh, literacy, uh, the artist education not each and the particular activities are given. Now come to article 15, dependent personal services, uh, talking about the employment income, uh, come to this subject to the provisions of article 16, 18 and 19, 16 director fee, 17 artists and sponsors, section the article 18 pensions and annuities. Salaries, wages here very clearly given in the independent personal it has given professional income. Here talking about salaries, wages and other similar remuneration derived by a resident of the contract in state under employment, again talking about the individual taxation, <coughs> shall be taxable only in that state. If it is Singapore, he will be taxing in that state unless the employment is exercised in other contracting state. If the employment so exercised, such remuneration as it derived from may be taxed in the other contracting state. Even if he has done the employment in Sri Lanka, subject to this condition, he may tax in Sri Lanka. Notwithstanding the provision of subparagraph 1, come to this very important remuneration derived by a resident of the contracting state in respect of an employment exercise in the other contracting state shall be taxed only in first mentioned state if may karunu satis may vidhihatama tiyanava nam. The person, this individual person, has to pay tax in only the Singapore, if not both Singapore and Sri Lanka. Come to this. The recipient is present in that other contract in state for a period of periods, not exceeding in 183 days in 12 months period. If it is exceeds, has to pay tax in Sri Lanka. And uh, this is and not all, all three should satisfy Lamai. The remuneration is paid by you on behalf of an employer who is not a resident of other contracting state and if it is paid by uh, the resident of the, if, uh, the remuneration is paid or on behalf of an employer who is not a resident of other, that means not a uh, uh, resident in Sri Lanka. Uh, then not a resident of other contracting state. Then if it is borne by uh, the remuneration is borne by the resident of that other contracting state, now there is issue. The remuneration is not borne by the permanent establishment of fixed base. If it is borne by the permanent establishment of fixed base, then how to pay tax in here. Okay? Then uh, this is for the article 15 and article 14, independent personal and the dependent personal. Article 16, 17, 18, Lamai, please go through and uh, for these things I am not going to discuss, but I need to come to article 22, elimination of double taxation, elimination of double taxation in that in Singapore, double taxation shall be avoided as follows. The, these are the methods given to elimination of double taxation. This provision also, Article 22 also really important. Where a resident of a Singapore derived from Sri Lanka, which in accordance with the provision of this agreement may be taxed in Sri Lanka. Singapore shall subject to its laws uh, regarding the allowance as a credit, see allowance as credit against Singapore tax of the taxpayer. What is the method of elimination? 
tax credit method which given in what treatment bilateral agreements can you remember tax credit the tax sparing credit benefit has given and for the Sri Lanka where the resident of Sri Lanka derives income from Singapore which is accordance with the provision of this agreement may be taxed in Singapore and Sri Lanka shall allow as a deduction from the income on the resident equal to tax paid the foreign tax credit for on behalf of the Sri Lankan resident clear now it is very important then article 23 non-discrimination what is this non-discrimination provision lamai this is talking about one contract state uh, president cannot be the discriminated in the other country that is the simple thing we will come to this nationals of a contract in state shall not be subjected in the other contracting state to any taxation or any requirement connected here uh, therewith which is other or more burdensome than the taxation and the connected requirement to which nationals of that other state in same circumstance in particular with respect to resident or uh, resident are or may be subject that is why am I here also uh, for interest income even the rate has treaty it has given is 10 percent then from the non-discrimination non part of it uh, even we have concluded it is less than is the less than 10 percent it has given in the non-discrimination thing we can uh, go for, again I am highlighting that we can go uh, the uh, same provision which is in the uh, double taxation treaty which is not uh, not exceeding 10 percent we can apply that ok. Then uh, one national of the one country cannot be discriminated by in a way that other national if he, if he is having a tax benefit on the same source for this uh, person also uh, should have this according to the provisions of relevant provisions of the law ok not in the all, all cases huh? if it is applicable only then uh, this is the uh, end of the discussion of the cassette notification I, mean, I have discussed the entire uh, if it is what are the important areas how it applicable and all these things I have discussed taking a, a considerable amount of time and taking the entire gasset, I have discussed that now uh, the theoretical discussion of the gasset has done, but uh, now we need to go for the question discussion with reference to the gasset notification. Okay, next step we will do that.